my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus, because he's never Faithful through generations. 
Good morning. morning. Wonderful to have each of you here as we join together to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Everything you need to know will be projected for you behind us here on our wall. We're finishing up our teaching series for September that we've been calling 30 Days of Prayer. We'll have a children's message. We'll have communion at the beginning and the message at the end. And then our special thing today um, is we are giving Bibles out to our kindergartners and third graders um, this day. Um, I think that's it. Nope, one more. Prayer is different once again. Uh, for those of you who have been with us the past few weeks, we've been praying in a different way. We've been giving you the opportunity to pray out loud, just like I do. So we'll be doing that again this day. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get there. That's it. God's wishes, blessings, friends, as you worship him. I invite you to stand as we join with our praise team and sing our opening praise song, starting with Your Will Be Done.
even as we are tired this day, we do shout out the praise of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Friends, we have this opportunity to come together uh, believing in the same Jesus and confessing that same faith that we confess for ourselves. And we do that this morning with these questions and answers. So I ask you, do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, yes I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, friends, the scriptures teach and we believe that something unexplainable occurs between God and his people in the sharing of Holy Communion. In, with, and under the bread and wine, the Lord offers his body and blood to strengthen the faith of believing Christians. And those who receive the sacrament of faith receive what Christ promised, the forgiveness of sins. So I ask you, do you acknowledge your sins, and are you willing to turn from them with the help and assistance of the Holy Spirit? Yes, I acknowledge my sin and seek the Lord's mercy. Acknowledging your sin and seeking our Lord's mercy, I invite you to join me now as we silently go before him, confessing all those sins we know and those sins we don't know. God's holy word tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Knowing this truth, I ask you, do you believe that God, for Jesus' sake, has forgiven your sins? Yes, Jesus Christ died for me and suffered the punishment that I deserved. What motivated Jesus to willingly sacrifice himself on behalf of lost and condemned sinners like us? His great love for the Father and for me and other sinners, as it is revealed in the Scripture. So then upon this, your confession before God and your brothers and sisters in Christ, and by your faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, I announce to you as a called and ordained servant of God, and on behalf of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're now blessed to turn our attention to God's gifts that he gives to us in his very body and blood. So I ask you these questions. Friends, do you believe that the Lord offers Christians his body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine for the strengthening of faith and the forgiveness of sins? Yes, I believe the scriptures which teach. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Should Christians with weak faith receive the sacrament? The sacrament is especially offered for those weak of faith. What conditions should cause a Christian to refrain from receiving the sacrament? Disbelief, unwillingness to forgive another, hatred, and refusal to recognize the body and blood of the Lord in the sacrament. How then are Christians to live? Now our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave it thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me.
In the same way, also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now, now for all baptized Christians who share in these, our confessions and desire to come forward and receive the Lord's Supper this day, hear what Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 11. Whoever therefore eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. You may be seated. As you prepare to come forward and receive communion this day, we do ask that you please read through this commitment to our Lord that we do share here uh, at Luther Memorial Church. After reading through this, we invite you to come forward for continuous communion. Uh, We'll start on my left, um, our usher, and then we'll go down, and then we'll come up and make a U. You'll process to my left and to your right after receiving the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're communing with us in the pews this day, that's awesome. We will do that at the end of our continuous communion. And also, our praise team will be leading us um, in singing another song this day. Friends, God's gifts are ready for you. Love to join us never to Jesus, knowing all your sins have been forgiven.
go into maybe communion in the pews this day. Take and eat the true body of Jesus Christ, giving it to death for all your sins. And then take and drink the true blood of Jesus Christ shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. Now that you have received this true body and this true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may his strength preserve you steadfast in that one true faith unto life everlasting. To part in the Lord's love, his joy, and his never ending peace, and all your sins have been forgiven. Amen. At this time, we'd like to invite kindergartners and third graders and their parents um, up to the front for our Bible giveaway. Perfect. You can come up here if you want. There you go. Just stand right there. Ben, you can stand right there. Dad's going to hold on to it first. He's, if you want to stand right there, perfect. All right. Today marks an exciting step in the faith lives of these children receiving a Bible of their own. Parents, you have received the charge to bring your children up in the knowledge and love of the Lord. You have responded to that call and now have the joy to join your child in taking the steps of faith. When a child is baptized, God makes them his children, members of his family. As children grow up, it is important that parents teach them what it means to be a member of God's family. One very important way to do that is through the reading of God's word in the Bible. Parents, are you willing to help your child learn about God's love, especially through Jesus Christ by reading the Bible, this Bible with your child? If so, answer, yes, with God's help. Parents, while Sunday school and worship are meant to assist and guide you in the Christian education of your children, we recognize that you were the first and continue to be the most important teachers in the, in the child in your child's life. This also includes teaching them about their Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. As your child continues to grow in their reading skills, we encourage you to read God's written word together with this age-appropriate Bible. Parents, please place this Bible in your child's hands. Help them to read it and grow to love it. God the Holy Spirit promises us that when his word is read, it will be a blessing in the faith life of your child. Let's go ahead and together pray for these families. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each child and parent here. We pray that these Bibles become a big part of their lives. We pray that each of these students will keep reading and learning and asking questions to know, to know the truth about Jesus, and so their faith in him will keep growing. Bless each parent with the encouragement of their church family to help them walk alongside their child and learn and grow in faith together. Amen. Congratulations, Thanks guys. for coming up, friends. As they go back, invite you guys to stand. You're all ready. You can applause. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead and stand, folks, as we go to our Lord in prayer. You just prayed out loud, and that's all we're going to give you the opportunity to do once again today. These 30 days of prayer have been hoping to help us understand that all of us are able to talk to the Lord at any time in any place. And so as we move into our prayers today, I'm going to say a few prayers. We're going to go to the next slide there, and we're going to give you the opportunity to pray out loud if the Holy Spirit leads you in that way. I will go silent, and then we'll have prayers, and then we will conclude together. Almost well, gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us your word and allowing us to have it placed into our hands, whether young or old. We know that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we are strengthened through those words, through that truth. So we ask you now that you continue to instill the truth of your words into the depths of our hearts, that we may go forth into this world, into this nation, into this community, filled up with truth and love, and being the ones to make a difference, to show the love of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to all those we come in contact with. Lord, along the way, there are struggles, there are hurts, and there are many things that we need to bring before you. 
So as a community of believers, we bring these things before you this day. So, Lord, as you move hearts to speak out loud, to speak to you in silence, we place before you all those who are struggling in body, mind, or soul, knowing that you are a good and gracious God filled with love and mercy and healing. We pray for complete healing for all these, your children, Lord. But if that not be your will at this time, be with them through this tribulation with courage and hope. The same courage that you have given to these, your children who have cried out to you this day in prayer. Lord, we know that sometimes we don't know what to say. Sometimes we feel like we might just get in the way. And at those times, we thank you that you have not only given us your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to rescue us from all sin, death, and the devil who went for us everlasting life, but before he went to be with you, he gave us a prayer that we could always call out to you. And so, Father, together this day, we once again say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, friends. We'd like to invite our children up front now for our children's message. All right. Hi, boys and girls. How are you? Good morning. So nice to see you guys today. All right, we are going to do a little activity here. Oh, let's open on it. You guys all see that okay? You can move over if you need to see it. All right, I have a little activity for us to do today. I want to see, almost everybody is going to be able to pick one. But if you would like to, would you pick one of these strips of paper in this bucket? <clears throat> Go ahead. You guys want to take one? 
sounds good. All right. <clears throat> Would you guys, if you are able to, tell me what it says on your strips of paper? What does yours say? Wisconsin. All right. Can you see that one says Saint Louis? Saint Louis. Mine too. Earth continent. What does yours say? United States. All right. What does yours say? Luther Memorial. Okay, and what does yours say? Family. All right, good job. All right, out of all of those things, which one do you think is the biggest one? You're right. All right, come up and put it on the top. So earth and continents is the biggest. Good job. Which one do you think comes next, if we're going from biggest to smallest? Who is the next one? Okay. Good job, Ben. Well, what do you think? Hmm, does that one fit? No. Who do you think has the next one? All right. Good job. You guys are working it out. United States. So first Earth and continents, then United States. All right, which one's next? Mm-hmm. Stick Wisconsin up there. All right, what comes after Wisconsin? You're right. There you go, Ben. All right, what's after River Falls? What comes next? Luther Memorial, that's our church, right? Okay, and then which one is last? Family. All right, come on up. Okay. This is one of the ways that my family at home prays. It's called big to small. So you think about everything that's really, really big, the biggest thing that you can think about, and then you go down the line to the smallest. So we start with, thank you for Earth and Continents. Thank you for the United States. Thank you for Wisconsin, River Falls, Lutheran Memorial, family. And then we can stick friends in there too, right? So this is one way that we can definitely think about all of those things that Pastor is talking about, right? So today what he's really going to talk to us about is how important it is to pray for the Earth, the continents, and also the United States. So why do you think that it's important for us to pray for those things? Yeah. Yeah, we have a home, definitely. Yeah, anything else? Corbin. Yeah, if we didn't have earth and continents, we didn't have land, right? And guess what? Jesus tells us to pray for those things. He tells us to pray for our um, the continents in the country, and that Jesus is the God of heaven and all of the earth, right? So we should, he created all of the earth, he created all the people on earth, that he teaches us to pray for all of those things too. So if this is something that helps you to remember to pray for all those, I encourage you to use it. So pray from big to small. And then sometimes if you want to have opposite day, you go from small to big. Got it? Okay, so let's practice that. Um, we will all pray. Do we all put our hands in? Should we do that or do we all pray? All right, we'll all fold our hands. All right, here we go. Fold your hands and congregation can join with me too. Lord, thank you for the earth and continents. Thank you for our country. Thank you for our state. Thank you for River Falls. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our families and friends. And thank you for loving me. Amen. Great, you guys can go back. Thank you. The first reading for today is taken from Hebrews chapter 11, starting at the 32nd verse. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell the Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of, of David, of Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies in flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. 
Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the word was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though commanded through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, starting at the 8th verse. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Well, if you've never been here before or have never been to this service, this might be a little bit odd for you to have a sermon at the end of the service and the communion at the beginning. But it may also have been odd for you to be invited to pray in the middle of a church service, right? That, that may have been a little bit odd, but either way, we're glad you're here, and I'm going to invite you to pray with me this time. You don't have to pray, but invite you to pray with me. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to freely worship you. We take it for granted so often, but it is a gift that you have blessed us with. So, Father, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon this place, that my words may be your words, and the words that are proclaimed here this day may resonate in the hearts and minds of your children as they see once again how much they are loved by you and how they are sent by you to share that love. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's start with prayer. We've been talking about this for a while. It's something not so easy to do for many, right? Right? You guys did great today, but, but when we started off a month ago asking people to pray out loud, yikes, it was quiet. Yet, as children of God, when you pray, when we pray, we pray through faith in Jesus. We pray by faith in Jesus. So even if you think your words are simple, when you pray, when you speak to the Lord, whether in your thoughts, in your mind, or out loud, when you pray through faith, you pray by faith in Jesus Christ. Now, here's the thing about faith. You cannot come to it on your own. If you've been here before, it's starting to sound like a broken record, right? You, you, you cannot come to faith on your own. We teach it this way. I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. Sanctified means made holy. So he's made me holy, and he's kept me in the true faith. Now, there's two big important things that we teach here. First is the one we've talked about all the time, right? The Holy Spirit does the work. The Holy Spirit has done the work, bringing you to faith. The second is this. The Holy Spirit has done the work in you, personally. That means that your faith does not save your children. That means your faith does not save your children grandchildren. That means your faith does not save your spouse. Only you can believe. Someone else's faith cannot save you, and your faith cannot save them. We hear in Luke from Jesus chapter 7, he says this, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. 
Your faith has saved you. That's why in the creeds we say, I believe, not we believe. Now, I know this may be troubling to hear because we want our loved ones to believe. We want others to believe in Jesus. We want others to be saved. And so this is why we must pray. This is why we pray that those who don't know Jesus come to know him. How? By the power of the Holy Spirit. This is why we pray for those we love who have fallen away from the faith. That's why we who know him by faith share his name and show his love. By our faith in him, the Holy Spirit works in us and through us so others may know, so others may see, and then by God's grace, believe. Now, we also pray because we know that just because people have faith, it doesn't mean everything's going to go smoothly. We spent this entire month of September looking at Hebrews 11. We're going to be there today, so if you want to take out your Bible or your Bible app on your phone, that's where we're going to be today as we finish up that book. But as we've looked at at Hebrews 11, we've seen great men and, and women of God who have lived by faith. They didn't have it all together, though. They had struggles along the way. And yet, through it all, they kept the faith. So now, we get to the end of this chapter, and what do we see? We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 11, and I want you to drop down to verse 35. Verse 35, this is where we're going to start. It says, women receive back their dead by resurrection. And then it says this. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, and mistreated. Some were tortured, stoned, and sawn in two. But here's the thing, friends. This, was, this, this wasn't happening just a long, 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 long time ago. It's happening today. The same stuff that we read about here is happening today in different parts of the world. In March of this year, the group called Open Door USA estimated that more than 360 million Christians just last year lived in countries where persecution was significant. Roughly 5,600 Christians were murdered. More than 6,000 were detained or imprisoned, and another 4,000 plus were kidnapped. In addition, more than 5,000 churches and other religious facilities were destroyed. And that's not just over in Africa or China. That's in Canada and the United States, too. Where churches and religious facilities were damaged and destroyed. Let's look at this a little bit closer. Hebrews 11.35b said, Some were tortured, refusing to accept release. Open Door, Open Door USA reported that any North Korean right now caught following Jesus, is at immediate risk of imprisonment, brutal torture, and death. So the question is this. Why then do they still follow Jesus if they know that this is going to happen? 
Why then do they still follow Jesus if they know that if they get caught, they're going to be imprisoned, they're going to be tortured, and they may even be killed? Well, I think it's because the rest of verse 35. Go back to that. Refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. By faith in Jesus, they know that something better is going to come. They know that, that even though they will be tortured, even though they, they will be imprisoned, and yes, even though they know that possibly they may be killed, they remain in the faith because they know that something better is to come. They know that eternal life is theirs. So what do we need to be doing here? We need to be praying. We need to be praying for these brothers and sisters in Christ in North Korea. Should we do that now? Let's do that. Father God, thank you. Thank you for giving such firm and strong faith to our brothers and sisters in North Korea. Every day, every day they are at risk of being tortured for their faith in you. Continue to empower them by your spirit to stand strong in the faith until you bring them to life everlasting. Amen. All right, let's move on. Verse 36 and 37 here. Let's do this again. Others suffered mocking and flogging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned and they were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, and mistreated. Just let that sit a bit. All across the world, persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ stand strong every single day. They know, they believe that the word of God endures for how long? Forever. The persecuted believers here provide us with examples of bold faith in the face of severe opposition. We need to continually be praying for them. Because our lives here in America are peaches and cream compared to theirs. They know that living a life of faith means facing trials and persecution. And that means trusting that God's goodness is greater than whatever they're going to endure. Because his love, his word endures forever. So yes, we need to be praying for them every single day. But not only that, we too need to be looking to them and learning from them. Because here's a reality check, Christians in America. Our faith, our witness here in the United States is increasingly being challenged. Whether you want to say it is or not. We benefit from the true stories of those who have come by faith before us. Those who by faith have overcome. And I'm going to say it again. Make no mistake about it. Christians in America are being persecuted for their faith in Jesus. Now you may disagree. I know others disagree with me. But when you look up the definition of persecution, do you know it says it includes hostility and ill treatment for people of certain races, but also incur, it includes hostility and ill treatment of people for their faith. Persecution is not just when we, we, we see heads rolling. Persecution is not just what we see in the text where people are stoned or sawn in two. Not persecuted, it's not just that because of their faith in Jesus. Jesus himself teaches that persecution will come. Persecution will come and it will take on many forms that don't result in death. Matthew chapter 5, friends, Jesus says this Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice, be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. They persecuted them, but Jesus is also saying, guess what? They're going to persecute who? 
you, me, followers of Jesus today. As followers of Jesus, some are killed. They're martyred for their faith. Others are shunned. They're disowned by their families. And others suffer. So that means here in America, as a Christian, you are persecuted when you are slandered, when you are mocked for your faith in Jesus. It may not look like what it does over in North Korea or China. But guess what? You are persecuted for your faith in Jesus. Yes, so standing firmly on the word of God in love. And others mocking you for the stance that you have because of where you stand on the Bible. That is persecution for your faith in Jesus. Heard stories like this, passed over for a promotion because people know what you believe on specific societal issues. That's persecution. Why don't we just call it what it is as a church? It's not being called that out there in society, but that's what we need to call it in the church because that's what it is. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is important to know that we are facing, what we are facing is exactly what Jesus said would happen. Even if it isn't what we see across the world. Therefore, it's important to know how we are to respond in faith. Let's go back to Jesus, right? His words from Matthew 5, once again, a little bit further on down in this sermon, this time in verse 44. He says, I say to you, amidst all this, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Can you do that on your own? No, I can't. Neither can you. We can't love others unless we believe, unless we have faith in Jesus, and unless we live that faith out in Jesus. Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 2, he said this in verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. In the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This from the man who was persecuting followers of the way. To this man who says this now, who is being persecuted for following the way. For following Jesus. But let's not forget about the rest of this chapter, right? Let's not forget about those who never saw or heard the promised Messiah. Look at these last few verses of chapter 11. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. So the world was not worthy. What what does this mean here? Well, what it means is that the world despised God's people. The world despised God's saints. Even though they were worthy of praise for standing strong in the faith, they were despised. And here's the thing. Even though they never saw or heard about this promised Messiah that we know so well, they still received what God had provided. That thing, that gift that is better for us. That gift that will make them and us perfect. Let's go back to Paul. Hear how he said it. He said it this way. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Even death on a cross. 
Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. That name is... Thank you. Notice those words. The name that is above every name is what? So here in America, the name that is above all names is what? In North Korea, the name that is above all names is what? In Nigeria, in Canada, in Russia, in Australia, the name that is above all names is what? Why is this so important? Why do believers across the world not bend over to the governments who try to tell them how and who they can worship? Why do believers across the world take the sufferings and beatings? Why do believers across the world love their neighbors, their enemies, and pray for those who persecute them? Because they know that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. In heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So come that last day, when Jesus comes back, everyone's going to know what? That Jesus is Lord. So we pray. We have to pray. We pray for those persecuted, that they may stand strong on the word of God. That they may stand firmly planted in their faith amidst the pressures that surround them. We pray for those who do not know Jesus. We pray for those who have turned away. That the Holy Spirit may work on their hearts and bring them back to this saving faith. For friends, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. To conviction of things not seen. True faith in Jesus is active in love and steadfast under persecution. By faith, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we, along with our brothers and sisters in Christ, across the nation, across the world, together we stand strong under persecution, remaining active in love, and holding firmly to the true word of God. Would you stand and pray with me? God of all, you held nothing back when you gave your son. It was through Christ's complete obedience that we were brought into your family. When your people are persecuted or discouraged, remind us that one day all will know and acknowledge you as God. Give me the boldness to get a head start and confess your name every day of my life. For I know, for I believe that you and you alone are the only king forever. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I invite you to remain standing as we send ourselves out singing, Only King Forever.
Amen. Thanks for being here, friends. Go ahead and have a seat. College Bible Study, we love our college kids. We love doing things for you. We have another College Bible Study opportunity for you this Thursday um, at 7 o'clock. Thank you all for always just supporting everything that we do here to reach out um, to God's children. Another one of those things that we're trying to do right now is collect um, items for the homeless. And our, our women's journey team is going to be putting bags together for you to keep in your car. And you're at a stoplight and someone's there. You're going to be able to hand this bag to them. They'll have a lot of the essentials um, that is needed to, to bless them, um, to, to help them get through um, Whatever they're, they're going through. If you've got more questions about that, uh, you can talk to somebody, not me. Sandy, Sandy Brace. Sandy, Sandy Brace, raise man. Thank you, Sandy. Talk to Sandy Brace. Talk to Sandy Brace. Um, next week, we start a, a new uh, adult Bible study on the Beatitudes. Um, tonight, we're finishing up a study on Exodus. Our Sunday school is going for our pre K through 12th graders. Um, and I think that's it. So thank you to our servants up top and down below uh, for being with us today. We do pray you're blessed in your worship of Jesus Christ with us. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you come back and worship that one true king, um, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, with us again. God's blessings, friends.